In this video, I am going to be discussing how the solar tax credit works. This is an updated video to my old tax credit video because some nice viewer let me know that I had incorrect math. So this is my redemption video. I don't even know how I made the math mistake, but I did. And I wanted to make an updated video because one of you viewed that video and said, could you do it on the whiteboard? And so I have finally gotten around to being able to do a video for you guys and break down the math so you can see it. So I really hope that this video is helpful for you and I want you to stick around to the very end because I have some news that may be changing any day now and could impact the solar tax credit. So make sure you stick around to the very end to learn what that is. In the meantime, I'm Jamie Green, the Solar Queen. On my channel, I talk about all things solar and I try and keep it as real as transparent and, and just giving you the information and knowledge that you need to go and make an educated decision if solar makes sense for you financially. If you have any questions after this video, make sure you put them in the comment section and I'll answer them as I can. But I just wanted to bring this video up to date and make the math accurate. I'm a human being and I make mistakes. This is my disclaimer. I am not a CPA or a tax specialist. So make sure you consult your CPA whether or not you are eligible for the solar tax credit. So let's get into the video. In this situation, I'm going to base it off a real life solar example that actually helped a homeowner who found me on my YouTube channel. We connected um, on the phone. At, he went to my website, which is jamiegreenthesolarqueen.com. He filled out the little form. We set up a time to call and talk on the phone. He was more comfortable with a phone call than a Zoom. And we started talking about his situation. And today we signed the papers to go forward with solar for his home and he's really excited. He did his due diligence too. He talked to a lot of other solar professionals out there and he, he decided to go solar with me. So thank you so much. You know who you are if you're watching this video. Let's dive into the real life example. Okay, so the, his system was $35,000. He had a utility average utility bill of about $170, $75 I would say. Some months it would be $100, other months it would be $300. I guess that would be an average of $200, but really, it, it really came down to about 175 with the real numbers, you know, because some months it would be 265, some months it would be 305, some months it would be $89. That was like the lowest, lowest, and you'll never, he'll never see that again unless he drastically changes his utility usage, but he's not going to because he likes his air conditioning. The average would, I would say, was about $175. So we got him a system to offset his historic usage by 115%. So that means he's getting all of his energy covered by solar and then 15% more. And this is why solar makes so much sense. But we're gonna break down the math. So $35,000 system times the 26%, it's gonna give him an eligibility of $9,100 for the tax credit. Okay, so $9,100. This uh, homeowner actually is not eligible for the tax credit. And what would make someone not eligible for the tax credit is if you're retired and living on social security, if you're on disability, if you don't work, or if you have your taxes and everything set up in such a way that you don't, like you have no tax liability. There are reasons why people aren't eligible for the tax credit and that's okay. But we're gonna use the scenario a couple of ways. I'm gonna break down the math of you, the scenario of if you owe, um, ha, like had a tax bill of $20,000. That's your tax bill or tax liability, okay? And then say you had um, withheld or reserved and set aside $25,000 to cover tax withholdings. You're gonna have at the end of the year, if all is, you know, like really simple and plain, you're gonna get a tax refund of $5,000 because you overpaid uh, $5,000 to cover your tax bill. Some people would rather get a return and overpay or have more money withheld than not to, to get a refund rather than owe the IRS. So in this case, like let's say they get the $5,000 refund, they're eligible for the tax credit if they have the tax liability because $9,100 is less than $20,000. So 
this in this situation this homeowner would get if they had the tax liability and everything and owed taxes they would have a fourteen thousand dollar one hundred tax return like they would get a refund a refund of this much money so why this is important is because let this real life example this homeowner actually took out a loan 25 years 1.99 percent the first 18 months his payment is 115 dollars for 18 months that's amazing and he's getting 15 percent more so that is a 60 dollars savings from what he was paying up here to the utility company of $175. Now, if he was eligible for the tax credit and he took the $9,100 that he got back, he could pay down the loan before this loan reamortizes at the 18 month mark right here. And if he does, his payment, if he takes the $9,100 and pays it down, it'll stay fixed at $115 for the life of the loan until he, he can pay it off if he wants. If he doesn't want to, he can just keep paying $115 for the next 25 years and still get the same, you know, save money from what the utility company was charging him. Say he wanted to take the $5,000 and take the whole $14,000 and pay it down, he will, and he'll probably land somewhere with, you know, uh, maybe a $100 payment if he pays down fourteen thousand dollars that would be awesome he'll probably be down a hundred dollars you know down here because it amortize reamortizes one time but let's pretend he wasn't eligible for the ninety one hundred dollars which he's not and he doesn't pay down the loan because why why just let it reamortize because his payments if he lets it reamortize they're gonna be 155 dollars 155 dollars is still 20 dollars savings from what he's currently paying on average to the utility company so in his mind he's saving 20 bucks even if he lets a loan reamortize and for the first 18 months he's going to just have a lower payment that i said i said to the homeowner because he's a golfer i go hey that just bought you a couple of rounds of golf he goes i know he's super excited so even even no matter what even if he keeps the tax credit say he doesn't want to pay it and he wants to pay ninety one hundred dollars to um you know pay down a credit card at what twenty percent interest right now someone might go i want to pay this ninety one hundred dollars towards more expensive uh loans they might go, let's remodel the kitchen or let's remodel the bathroom. Let's redo our backyard. Let's save this for a down payment for an electric vehicle, whatever it might be, or let's go on vacation. This is an entirely separate event from that you're gonna get in the, if this is the situation, you're gonna get a refund. If you're really disciplined with your finances and you wanna pay down the loan and keep the $115 payment in this situation, that's what you're gonna do. Let's pretend like this uh, homeowner has a $20,000 still tax tax bill or tax liability, but they didn't withheld enough money from their paycheck or they put didn't put enough money aside and they actually ended up only, um, they had $15,000 withheld and so they actually owe $5,000. What's going to happen here in this situation? They're still going to be eligible for the tax credit. They are going to take this 9100 and they're going to cover they're going to wipe out 5000 of this and then they're going to have $4100. They're going to have $4100 left that they're going to get in a return. So rather than owing the IRS of writing them a $5000 check, the tax credit's going to wipe out that and they're still going to get a $4100 tax credit in the form of a refund. And then so going back down to the situation for the first 18 months, it's going to still be $115. And if they hit, you know, let's say they only pay down 4100 well, then it's going to land somewhere in the middle between 115 and 155. It's probably going to land around 100, you know, like $140 or I guess, yeah, $140. So let's just say it's $140. Um, if they pay it down $4,100, they're it's still going to reamortize somewhere in the middle. Um, or if they want to go and find another $5,000 and pay it down, they can. And we go back to the same scenario that we just talked about a second ago. So this is what happens in the situation 
of the tax credit. Now, what happens if you get, let's make it a $100,000 tax credit or a $100,000 system and we'll use this scenario. We'll do this math over again. Obviously this would be different because $100,000 is a lot more, but they have a $100,000 system times 26% is gonna be 26,000 tax credit but they only had a tax liability of 20,000 and they only had, you know, they had $25,000 withheld. They, um, they're gonna get a $5,000 tax refund and they're gonna get, um, they're only gonna get $20,000 of it because, and they're gonna have $6,000. So they're gonna get $20,000 because their tax liability or um, was 20,000, but the tax credit is 26,000. They're gonna get a $5,000 refund because they overpaid by $5,000 and then they're gonna get $20,000. So th really, this homeowner is gonna get $25,000 back in a refund, but only 20,000 of that is the tax credit. So they have, they have um, $6,000 that they're gonna be able to roll over to 2023. I hope you followed me with that. So in 2023, they're gonna ha they're gonna be able to recoup the rest of the tax credit. And this, so this will play out in the situation where this tax credit is exceeds the tax liability for that tax year. So um, same thing goes down here. You know if they apply it or not. If they only are eligible for the twenty thousand dollars and they only can pay down the loan, then obviously it's gonna. Um, if they do pay it down the full 20,000, it'll re-amortize a little bit higher than what they've been paying for the first 18 months. I really hope that this math makes sense and explains things to you, whether or not you're eligible for the tax credit or not. If you're someone that's not eligible for the tax credit, I don't want you to discount or discredit solar. I want you to still look at your situation and what would happen in the instance if the loan does re-amortize, say if you finance it, because you could still save money like this homeowner even though he's not eligible for his tax credit he's still his his solar payment is still less than what he's paying on average to the utility company and he's getting 15% more power than what he was he got historically and what he already paid for the other thing that's happening is he's hedging himself from future rate increases from the utility company which if you're retired and you're working off of a fixed income this is really a smart thing to do the only thing i want to say is there are solar leases out there if you get a solar lease you are not eligible for the tax credit the solar company that's that's putting the solar system on and issuing the lease. If you talk to someone at Sunrun and they start you out at a 17 or a 19 cent or a 15 cent or whatever it is and it has, has an escalator built in, that is a lease and you don't get the tax credit. The Sunrun will get it and you just are leasing out your roof space and you're leasing out the equipment and you're getting the advantage of the savings from what you would otherwise be paying to the utility company. You're paying less over time with the lease, but it's still not as good in my opinion as ownership. And even if you don't qualify for the tax credit. So that's what I wanted to talk to you guys about. The other thing, if you stuck around to the very end of this video is there's something happening in on Capitol Hill right now. It is the Inflation Reduction Act. And if that passes, the good news is that this tax credit, instead of it being 26%, has the potential it will go up to 30 percent and be extended out for um, 10 more years and if you if if you got solar already this year and this passes any system that went into interconnection or got to permission to operate um, after december 31st 2021 your system will be eligible for the 30 percent federal tax credit so that is really good news but please don't wait for that to happen because if it doesn't pass and you hold off on getting solar, this federal tax credit here, that's 26% right now, it is set to reduce down to 22% just come January 1st. If you're really seriously thinking about solar for your home, please reach out to me, jamiegreenthesolarqueen.com. Set up a time to meet with me and we can have a conversation and I would love to help you. I help people all over the state of California and all across the country 
not all states, I, I can't help everyone in every state, but if I can't and you live there and I'll try my best to connect you with someone that I know, like and trust and will take care of you. I hope this video was really helpful. Thank you so much for watching and let me know in the comments what you think. If you have any questions and let me know if I did my math right. All right guys, you have a wonderful day. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.